Hey everyone, Ted Fletcher with FMS Integration. So I got a new product from Monit, which is for their Alta long range wireless sensor technology. So I got a handful of sensors and I'm going to be using their Alta serial Modbus gateway in order to read that sensor data back into uh, different platforms, whether it's being SCADA, PLC, mine's gonna be a Tritium interface going through like a Moxa ethernet gateway device. Uh, an M gate. So once you get one of these sensors, or the gateway I should say, and the sensors, you need to wire up power to this. Currently I have the gateway device wired to an RS45 to USB converter. That way I can use their configuration utility in order to set up the sensor. So with that being said, I wired up 24 volt DC power to the red and black leads and then wired up the other two leads to my USB to RS45 converter. So once you have your wiring set up and established, you can go to their website and they have a thing called the Modbus Sensor Gateway. It's their utility tool. You can open this up. You'll have to know what COM port is being designated by your machine as far as for your USB to RS45 if you're going through that route. They do have an option where you can talk directly to it from your SCADA or PLC device and actually write to registers in order to update some configuration. So on here, if you don't know what your COM port is, you go to your device manager, ports COM and LPT. My device is the RS45 isolated port, COM9. So all you need to do is select COM9 from that list. And then if you wanna check your communications real quick, you can go to here and just pull gateway coils. There's coils and holding registers giving you status information of the gateway itself as far as what's going on with it. Here we can see that it's calling out all false for the five coil inputs. The user guide I found, I think we go down to page 18, keep scrolling here a little. There we go. So you can see what coil represent what function. So here, the first one, if it returns a zero or false, it denotes that the wireless sensor system is not active. If it was configured, we should see a one or a true coming back through. So that's what we're gonna do with our first sensor. So if we go back to the program, just drag this over into the middle a little. Here, if we go to Modbus, or sorry, gateway commands. Oh, let's check the wireless state. All right, so it shows that the wireless is not active. There's three LEDs on the unit itself. And right now the bottom LED or the third is showing red, showing that the wireless is not active. So if we go here, we'll go register wireless device. So these Modbus gateways can accept up to 50 sensors. So the first one being in slot zero, so the first one I have is the long range wireless temperature sensor. On the side of the casing, there's a QR code label that also calls out the ID number. And these are 900 megahertz sensors. So ID number on this, when I look at the code is 1065872. And then we're gonna put it in the first slot or slot zero. So I'm gonna put a zero in there, click on okay. Perfect, it says now that the device is registered. So now I can come back over and just double check because then our status should have updated, which it did. Perfect. And then if I look physically at the gateway device, that bottom LED has now gone from red to green showing that the wireless network is active. So I'm gonna pop the sensor inside, or sorry, pop the battery inside the sensor. Go to Modbus queries, wireless device coils, our first index slot zero, click on okay. Perfect, we got data coming back on that. The user guide calls out what the different 
registers represent. So here I'm going to go to wireless device registers. Same thing. We'll select SOT zero. Nice. Now we got a bunch of data points that are actually being read off from the sensor. It's showing the holding register numbers being called out on the side here. Uh, doing a PLC type interface, depending on your controller, you know, you might have to increase the register by one, uh, all depending on what type of platform you're reading in on and what your options are. So if we go back over to the PDF. There's a section wireless device register list. So this starts showing what everything represents. Uh, Looks like we have some floats getting in, unique identifiers, firmware version, sensor type, voltage, so it's 40,005 or 40,006 depending on your platform. So if we look at 5, 307, so it's battery volts. This sensor that I have for the temp uses two 1.5 volt AA style batteries. So that makes sense on there once we apply the scale. We're at 3.07 volts, so that's good. Uh, so it looks to be a lot of different options depending on the sensor type that you're using as far as reading into that slot. So I'm going to go through and do my second sensor just to make sure that the process is repeatable, which I imagine it is. So on the second one, I have a humidity sensor. So I'm going to go to Gateway Commands, Register Wireless Device. The ID on this one is 1065740. We'll put this one in the second slot. Click on OK. Shows the device is registered. So now we should be able to go device coils. Go to that second slot. All right, we got data returned on that one. And we can read the actual sensor data. Go to, oh, here, let me pop the battery in on the sensor. Get that plugged in. Let's try that set of commands again. Wireless device coils, one, okay. All right, perfect. Imagine that's showing if the unit is transmitting or not. So then if we go back and look at the holding registers or the analog data for sensor one, perfect. Got all of our data points reading through 3.12 volts. All right, like I said, looks like Monic gives you a lot of different data that you can read off from one of these nodes, depending on what type of sensors that you're working with. I'm gonna be playing around with the temperature, the humidity, and a differential pressure sensor just to see what they can do with overall performance. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm integrating back to a Tritium interface on my end, but it's a simple Modbus RTU interface that comes off the serial comms. One of the things I noticed when you're in here, you can actually say pull gateway registers. Um, based on these registers, I believe you can do some write commands if you're not using the utility. If you want to actually change those to different states, which they call out at the beginning of the user guide. Oh, I think I went a little bit too far. There we go. Yeah, so if you didn't want to use the 19200, uh, default baud speed or you wanted to change the other comm parameters going down through you can do either RTU ASCII and then the default address on this unit is set to 95 from the factory so imagine you can write to that change that over to whatever you need I haven't tried to change mine yet for the first few instances I'm just gonna keep it set to that default 95 which I believe well, that's coils you know, holding registers, uh, active, that's still coils. There we go, there are the holding register sets. Uh, firmware version, ID, some floats, give me some different data points, the baud rate. So you can read that in if required. And here it is, the com address, 40,008. So if I move that over a little bit. So if we look at 40,008, 
you can see that that's coming over technically seven as far as for the true address that's coming in at 95 so here you should be able to write to this holding register and change it to something if you didn't want to use that default slave id of 95. so i'm going to play around with this stuff some more probably make some more videos depending on what i see with the different configurations and different options uh, depending on the sensor types and just the gateway in general so hope this was helpful uh, feel free to reach out to fms if you ever have any questions or comments or any suggestions on other videos and uh, we hope you have a great day Thank you for your time.